Developers want to work with Next.js because it has a fantastic developer experience and makes it easy to ship really fast sites. Content editors, they want a website page builder experience that allows them to stay agile and ship pages without needing to bring in a developer. I'm going to show you how we can get the best of both worlds. Hey, Alex here from the Prismic Developer Experience team, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a project with Next.js, Prismic, and Slice Machine so that your editors have the page builder experience and you have an awesome developer experience. Prismic is a CMS that allows you to choose your favorite front end and deliver a website builder experience to your content team. Prismic Slice Machine is a local development tool that we'll use to build our data models and our page sections that will allow our content editors to ship all those pages. Now that we know our tools, let's get to our project. So let's say I'm kicking off a new website build and my designer just sent me this Figma file. You can see I've got some layout components and I'll include those in the layout so that they're on every page. It's my nav and my footer. I also have some slices and these are my page sections and my content team will be able to choose from these and rearrange them and build whatever pages they want with these as kind of the building blocks. And then my designer also built out a couple example pages, just moving them around and showing me how we can actually use these slices in production and rearrange them, kind of like I am in Figma right now. So my editors will be able to do this and choose however they want to build the page. So we're not going to get into the styles and everything like that in this video, but I'm going to get you set up with a solid foundation to be able to ship a site with slices and this page builder style so that your content team is just going to absolutely love the freedom that you're giving them. So let's create a new Next.js app, add Slice Machine to it, set up Prismic in our project, and get up to the point where we're ready to ship our first slice. While Prismic has several great starters to choose from, I'm gonna show you how to start from scratch. So first we're gonna bootstrap that Next.js project. I'm gonna run to my terminal, npx create next app like that. I'm going to give my project a name. So I'm going Elliot Agency. It's the name of the project. Just like that. And you're going to hit enter. Hit yes to proceed. So we fast forwarded to the end of the install process. And now we have our basic Next.js app set up. So if you head over to the Prismic docs, we're going to click Next.js right here. And then we're going to click set up Prismic. And we are going to run this npx slice machine init command in the folder that we just installed our Next.js project in. So let's go ahead and copy that and head over to our terminal. I'm going to first enter that folder, cd. Let's see if it completes it for me. It does. And then we're going to paste npx slice machine init right here. And we'll probably have to log in and create things. But first, it's going to install this package. So it says we're about to configure Slice Machine, and all you have to do is press any key, and it'll bring us to the browser to log in. So I'm going to hit anything but Q. So just like that, I was logged in, and it's because I was logged in in the browser, and the terminal was able to connect those things. If you don't have a Prismic account yet, it's free. Go ahead and sign up. So now that I'm logged in, I'm going to head back to my terminal, and it offers me any of my previous repositories, so I can connect one of those. But for this, we're starting from scratch, so I'm going to hit create a new repository. And I'm going to name the repository. I'm going to name it the same thing as my folder. You don't have to, but I'm going to keep that. A-L-L-I-E-G-D-E. -E. You are going to need to name yours something different because as you can see, it needs to be unique because it becomes the subdomain by which you uh, can access your editor and do all kinds of stuff. So it needs to be something unique. Come up with whatever you've got for this demo. Uh, I'm going to hit enter and it would first check to see if it's unique. And it's going to go ahead and create that repository for me. Awesome. And now we're just downloading Slice Machine. We'll skip to the end of this install. Awesome. So the download and install finished. Uh, says it's successfully configured. So we're ready to start. Let's head back to the docs and see what's next to get our full Prismic site set up. We saw that we ran our init command. And that gives us a new Prismic repository that adds a script to our package JSON. That gives us a config file called sm.json. It detects that we were on Next.js and detected our framework. And it installed a few dependencies for us. We're going to install one more dependency and then we'll be on our way. So I'm going to copy this, copy, and paste it right there. And it's just going to install that last package for us. And then 
we are going to start configuring our actual code. So let's dive into the code now that this is installed. So here I am in Visual Studio Code. I've got my project open. And what we want to do is we want to create a new file called prismic.io.js. And that's going to allow us to do a few things to help set up Prismic. So if you head to the docs, we're going to grab this right here, hit copy. And I can talk about this as soon as we create our file. So I'm going to create a new file and prismic.io.js, just like that. I'm going to paste that in. And we see that we are importing everything from Prismic Client. Uh, we are importing a en enable auto previews from Prismic Next. And we're importing from that config file that I mentioned that gives us the URL for our Prismic repository and a couple other things. But for Prismic IO, we have a couple important functions here that allow us to get our data from Prismic and manipulate it in certain ways. So to go over this briefly, uh, the link resolver here is how you connect Prismic documents to URLs in Next.js so that when a certain URL is, is hit, you tell Next to go get this file. And the second thing here is create client. And that's just how you're going to create the client that you'll then use to make all your requests to Prismic. So if you need certain documents or if you want to get all blog posts or whatever it is, you're going to use the client to easily access that data and get it back into your project. So from here, we went ahead back to the docs. We got that set up and it, it'll explain uh, those things that we touched on, but we also want to update our app. So we have a couple things that I'm going to copy this and we're going to go to our underscore app JS and I'll explain there. So in next that's in pages and we have this default one that comes with next. We're just going to paste not maybe not on top of it, but yeah, like that. We'll keep the global styles for now and move those down and delete that and I'm going to hit save there. I'm going to hit save here too. So um, let's talk about this. So let's touch briefly on what we just did. We just brought in two components to wrap our entire app. Prismic Provider provides us some settings and utilities to make development a lot easier. And Prismic Preview actually unlocks previews for our app so that our editors can preview the work as they're working on it before they publish it. As you can see, we are passing Next's link component to our Prismic Provider so that that can be used throughout our app. So whenever someone is using a rich text field to link to another document, in the editor that will be actually rendered as a next link and you can get all the speed benefits of next internal routing. So the last thing here in the docs, we want to create a slice simulator page and this will allow us to create our slices in isolation. Slice Simulator is an environment that simulates the slices as if they were in production with mock data and lets you see how they're going to look without needing to worry about spinning up any data in your editor or anything else. It really speeds up your workflow. So we just got two things to copy. I'm going to copy this and go over to our app and create a new file. And this is called slice simulator.jsx, just like that. Gonna paste that in. Don't need to change anything. Awesome. We have one more thing to do. We just need to copy this over and put this in our SMJSON here. Pop this at the end. And there we go. Just like that, we have our local Slice Simulator URL. And now we can use Slice Simulator. So now it's time to start up Slice Machine and our Next.js development server. So to do that, I'm gonna come here to uh, my terminal and I'm going to run npm run dev for my next.js server. I'm going to open this and here I've got my local development server running here. Awesome. Now I'm going to open up a second terminal window to run the slice machine server. So npm run slice machine and that starts up slice machine. It's going to go through the first process the first time you do it might take a little bit of time no worries but it's going to kick off right here there we go and boom it's starting up and we get dropped into our slice machine ui right here so we'll make this page bigger perfect so right away slice machine asks us to create a custom type and it explains that custom types are models for your documents. They're the place where you define and configure fields and slices for your content. So 
we want a page. We want to be able to give our creators a page builder. So we're going to create a page. That's going to be a repeatable type. So we want them to create as many pages as they want. And I'm going to go ahead and say uh, custom type name is just a page and page, just like that. I'm going to give it a custom type ID of page. Create. There we go. We've created a page, your first custom type. Congratulations. And now we have been dropped into this part of the UI. So as you can see here, I have two zones. We have a static zone and a slice zone. Static zone is what it sounds like. It's going to stay locked in. It's going to stay the same way for each page. Every page needs some things, and that's where we're going to put those in the static zone. So for instance, every page should have a UID that keeps it unique. And I can also use this to connect it to the URL. So say uh, my editors want to create an about page. They can create an about page with a UID of about, and I can connect that to forward slash about. So I'm going to go ahead and click add here. It's offering me to change the field ID. I'm going to keep it as UID just like that. Click add and that's set. So I want to go ahead and also give this a title. So I'm going to click rich text and go ahead and just call title just like that. And here we go. So I can go in here and edit and choose which specific field types I want my editors to be able to select. Because this is a title, I'm going to lock it down to just an H1. And I'll hit save there. Cool. Now I want to click save to file system. Perfect. My work's been saved. So now that I've got a couple static fields, I want to go and make the slices that my designer sent to me and that I want to build for my editors. So let's go ahead, click here, slices, and then we're going to create a slice. I'll click create one and I get to name my slice. Let's check our slices over here. I'm going to create this call to action slice. So that's what I will call it. Call to action. And it's going to go in my default slices library. Perfect. All right. It's created my slice, but what does that mean? Let's check our code to see what's actually happening here. Back in our Next.js project, we see things look a little bit different. I now have a custom types folder that has a page folder inside it and has the model for that custom type. And I also have this slices folder that contains my new call to action slice. And you can see it's created an index.js file, which is just a React component. And it's created the model for that. And it's using these default fields that have shipped with this slice. So we have this slice component that we can now shape and customize however we want. So I'll delete real quick the title and the description just to get rid of the defaults. We can see that we have the non-repeatable zone and a repeatable zone. Basically a repeatable zone is anything that I want to maybe repeat over and over again. Like for instance, if I have this project grid and I want my editors to put a whole bunch of images or maybe just a couple images that can go in the repeatable zone for this. There's no repeating, so I'm just going to put that in the non-repeatable zone. So we have a title, we have content or body, and then we have maybe button text. Let's add it. First, we're going to go ahead and add a new field. I'm going to add that title. Let's see. We want rich text here, and I'll go title, and I'll hit add, and we get that title. And I'm going to edit it so that we lock into an h2 so i want to make sure that this is always an h2 i think that's the semantic proper thing for this and i'm going to hit save and then we want the body text right so add a new field another rich text so i'll just say body you can use whatever word you want and then we also have our button text and that's going to be just key text because it's just going to be a string, right? We don't want a lot of formatting on that button. So I'll just say button text. I'll do a camel case and look, it creates that label for me. Perfect. Last one, we actually want to add an image too, right? We want them to be able to swap out this image as they want. So last thing we want to add here is an image. And I'm just going to say background image, just like that. Add and I'm going to hit save model to file system. And we can go back to our model and see that it has been updated. So I now have the body, the button text, the background image, all that. Now, the thing is, it hasn't updated our React component because that's our job, right? We're going to be updating this React component just to get the, the text and images on the screen. Let's do that now. So Slice Machine has an awesome feature where we can click show code snippets. And this allows us to get quick snippets that already know the data structure of what we just built. So I'm going to copy this. I can also hit click copy. Um, 
And I'm just gonna cut out everything from this, right? We're starting from scratch and I'm gonna paste that in and we're already importing that from Prismic React. And this is just gonna take in that title and it's going to output using the rich text component that handles the H1 and renders it correctly. So I'm gonna hit save here and let's actually go check this out before we do anything else. So remember I told you about Slice Simulator? That's gonna let us see our slice with some mock data in it. So I'm gonna click preview slice, and then I come over here and there is our H1. I'll prove it to you by maybe putting a little exclamation marks at the end, and there's our exclamation marks. So that is mock data that Prismic is providing you through Slice Machine that allows you to start building without needing to worry about data in the editor or anywhere else. We haven't put data anywhere, but you've got mocks out of the box. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring the rest of our fields into our new slice component. Copy this, this is our body text here. And then I'm going to also bring over our button text. And this is in a different component because it's just a simpler one. It's Prismic text. And I'm just gonna import that as well from the same uh, library. And then last but not least, we've got our background image. Normally we would put this in with some CSS rather than in line like this, but for this demo, no, no need. And uh, this is yelling at us because we're not using next image. And normally if we weren't putting in our CSS, we would do just that. But for this demo, don't worry about it. So we're gonna hit save. All right, so let's see how these are rendering in Slice Simulator with our mocks. So head over to Slice Simulator. And just like that, we have our slice. So it has all mock data. These are just coming in, like that's an unsplash image. Um, we have our button text here. See how it's not creating a new line because it is just coming in as regular text. It is being output as, let's see. Yeah, it's just being output as a string. So it would, that would go inside of our button. And there's our paragraph and our H2, just like we locked it down to say, this needs to be an H2. Awesome, this is exactly what we're looking for. And now you can take this to the next level and start styling your slices exactly how you need them. Create lots and lots of slices and add them to your page so that your editors can build out this entire website that we have here. And now you're starting to see that power where you're giving the editors these tools, these slices, and they can just create more and more and more pages and never need to bother you with small stuff like that. So that's the beauty of shipping a headless website builder with Prismic and Slice Machine. Now you know how to set up a website from scratch with Slice Machine, Prismic, and Next.js. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or have any videos that you want us to make about Prismic and Slice Machine or Next.js, leave them in the comments below. We would love to make more resources for you. Until next time, I'm Alex from Prismic. Take care.